Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Hansen. Welcome to Homelessness in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm here to talk to you about what the course is going to be like and what you need to know starting out this first week. This video is especially for those of you who won't be joining us in person until Thursday. Uh, although it might be helpful for people joining us on Tuesday to watch too. Um, the, the purpose of this video is to go through the syllabus briefly. Uh, you can read, so I'm going to trust you to read the syllabus on your own and get in touch with me, in touch with me with any questions. Uh, but I'm going to go over it briefly with you so you have some idea of what to expect. And we're also going to talk about expectations for our Teams meeting with Dr. Paget on Wednesday. So first, let's talk about the syllabus. I'm not going to show it on the screen. I'm just going to go over it. It's posted on Moodle, and I've attached it to my most recent email. So you should be able to read along. So uh, the course description says that this project will use a service learning framework to examine issues associated with homelessness in Birmingham and Alabama. In addition to readings, lectures, documentaries, and guest speakers, you will engage in direct action addressing homelessness. Throughout the course, you will reflect upon your experiences and share with each other through class discussion. So uh, I'm not going to go through all of the learning objectives, um, but the uh, required materials are two books. Uh, I want you to get the book At Home on the Street, People, Poverty, and a Hidden Culture of Homelessness. Uh, it was written by Jason uh, Adam Wasserman and Jeffrey Michael Clare in 2009 here in Birmingham at UAB. So it's not only a discussion of homelessness and homeless subculture, but of homeless subculture particular to Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, next, I want you to read uh, Deborah Paget and Benjamin Henwood and Sam Sambaris' book, Housing First, Ending Homelessness, Transforming Systems, and Changing Lives. Um, these books are uh, both very well written. Uh, I will tell you that Home on the Street is a little quicker to read, and Housing First probably requires more dedication. So you'll want to set aside more time for readings from Housing First. Uh, it's really written for practitioners and graduate students more than for undergraduates. So it may be a little bit challenging at first, but you'll get the hang of it. Um, we're going to be reading these books in parallel. Uh, so it, we're not going to finish one and then read the other. We're actually going to read both books the whole time. Um, additional course readings will be available on Moodle. Uh, I want to let you know that you should be able to get both of these books online for about $50 total. Uh, if you have difficulty acquiring the books, I have a small budget uh, that I can use to help you get the book. I ask that you reserve this for people who need help. Uh, but if you find that price is a barrier for you in getting the textbook, please let me know and I can help you. Um, grading is going to be weighted very heavily toward reflective writing. Um, throughout the course, you will complete uh, three reflective writings, each worth, it says here 10%, but you can tell that 15% times 3 is 45%. So each worth 15% of your course grade. Uh, these are going to be brief one to two page papers uh, which you will critically in which you'll critically reflect on what you're learning in the course. You'll talk about course readings, guest speakers, and service activities. Uh, and these are intended to be subjective reflections. So you're not intended to just kind of write an essay on this is what we learned, this is what this author said, this is what this guest speaker said. You're supposed to write about your experience of those activities. So talk about what you, what the readings made you think about. Uh, what questions did the guest speakers raise for you? What feelings did you have while engaging in service? And how did that help you learn? So these are meant to be subjective, first person, kind of accounts of your experience. Um, you're also going to do individual or small group service activities. And I'm only counting these for 10% of your course grade. That's because times are hard. 
uh, social distancing is in place. Uh, a lot of agencies are not taking in-person volunteers. It might be rather difficult for you to find a service activity uh, to do, and you might only be able to find one for the whole semester, and you might not be able to find any at all. So I'm not counting it for very much of the grade. Um, but before participating in the point in time count, my goal is that each student will serve individually or as part of a small group at a homelessness direct action agency in Birmingham, either at the firehouse shelter, first light shelter, community ministries at Highlands United Methodist Church, community on the rise at Church of the Reconciler, um, or any number of direct action service orgs. Um, you could also suggest other service partners that you think would be appropriate, which I may approve or not. Uh, I'm inclined to be very flexible, so if you have an idea, please pitch it. Um, I, I know it's hard to find service opportunities right now. I'll be happy to help coordinate individual and small group service activities, but each student is responsible for participating in scheduled activities and completing the service assignment as directed by organization staff. What this means is I'm happy to help set up an activity for you, but once it's on the books, you're responsible for showing up and doing the work. Uh, so I'm not going to be there with you. I'm not going to be there to supervise you. Once we get it scheduled, you're on your own. 25% um, of the course grade is going to be participation in the point in time count itself. So as a class, we'll be participating in the point in time count with One Roof Birmingham. The point in time count is a census of persons experiencing homelessness in Birmingham on the dates of January 26th and 27th. Uh, all students are expected to participate in both shifts of the point in time count. So we'll talk a lot more about the point in time count as the semester wears on. But what you need to know now is that on two evenings at the end of January, uh, we will all meet at the One Roof offices and with volunteers who are trained in doing this kind of work, uh, we will go out onto the street and into the homeless shelters in Birmingham and we will interview people we meet. Um, some of the people we meet will just be people who are on the street who are not experiencing homelessness uh, and they'll tell us, I live in a house and we'll stop interviewing them. But other people will be people who are experiencing homelessness. And the goal of this is the same as the goal of any other census. It's to get an accurate count, or at least a pretty good estimate, of how many people are living without a permanent address in our city. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, most people who've done it find it a very rewarding experience. Um, we've never had kind of a safety or discomfort incident. Uh, I think everyone is going to have a pretty positive experience. Um, that counts for 25% of the course grade. And because I have you participating in two very different ways throughout the course, in-person participation and virtual participation, I'm grading you for each of them. So 10% of your course grade is how you participate in class. That means showing up to each meeting, participating in a meaningful way, having done the reading assignments, asking questions, sharing observations, and being responsive to your colleagues. You'll also participate virtually. So each week on whichever day, Tuesday or Thursday, that you're not in class, um, you should complete assigned readings or documentaries and contribute to the group discussion forums. So in order to participate in a discussion forum, I expect you to post at least one discussion question or comment and respond to at least two of your colleagues' questions or comments. Uh, so that's three total contributions, one question or comment of your own, and two responses to a colleague. Uh, you're expected to do this every week on the day that you aren't in person. Uh, I'm not grading you for participating in guest lectures, uh, but just know that that will count toward your virtual participation and contribution. Uh, when we have guest speakers on Wednesdays, those meetings are absolutely mandatory. You're definitely expected to be there. You will not earn a successful participation grade if you skip those meetings. Um, a little about my policies. Um, so I am not a hard person to get in touch with, but I'm also not very fast. 
Uh, so the best way to get in touch with me is via email. And I will respond to your email within 24 hours, no matter what. If your email is urgent, please use the options in Microsoft Outlook to mark it urgent. Uh, I've included my cell phone number in this syllabus. If you need attention right away, so if, for example, you're at a service site and you have an urgent question and you really need my input or my help, please call or text me. This is okay to do. I'm asking a lot of you in this class and I'm willing to give a lot as well in terms of accessibility. So please call or text me if you're having a, a situation where you feel you need my attention right away. Um, if you need a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me, please use the scheduling app that I've linked to uh, to make an appointment. Uh, this is the easiest way to make an appointment with me so that I can't get double booked. I like to say yes to everybody, and sometimes that means I say yes to two people for the same time slot. This app keeps me from doing that. Uh, you, you go to my calendar and you choose the amount of time you need to meet for and you just put yourself on my schedule and I get a calendar notification. Um, you can use the uh, comments section in that app to let me know what you'd like to talk about so I can be better prepared for the meeting, but you can schedule an appointment with me whenever you want to. Uh, finally, I'll be spending a lot of time in my office before and after class meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, I will generally not be on campus on Wednesdays unless you need help. Um, most of my office hours will be virtual. Um, that is, even if, I'm, even if I'm in my office, for social distancing reasons, I'll prefer to meet with you virtually. Uh, but if you feel you need an in-person meeting, please let me know. Um, meeting structure and expectations. So this course will be a hybrid of in-person and virtual synchronous meetings. Uh, half of the students will attend class on Tuesday, half will attend on Thursday, uh, and on Wednesday we'll all meet together using Microsoft Teams. Um, Tuesday or Thursday in-person meetings will consist of a lecture for 55 minutes, and these lectures will be pretty discussive. So I'll present material and information to you um, for about 55 minutes, maybe a little less. Uh, but you're encouraged to talk and ask questions and participate the whole time. Then we'll take about a 10 minute break, uh, followed by about 55 minutes of reading, discussion, and reflection. Um, during the lecture, you should be as attentive as possible, uh, ask questions, take notes, uh, do whatever helps you retain information. Um, there will be no exams in this class, so please don't feel that if you lose a tidbit of information, it's gone forever and you can't have it and you'll fail. That's not the case. Uh, but I do want you to get as much as you can out of this class. Um, during the reading and discussion period, you should demonstrate preparedness by completing all readings as assigned. That means if a reading is assigned on a particular day, I expect that you will come to class having read that reading. So if the reading is listed on the syllabus for uh, Thursday, January the 6th, I expect, or the 7th, I expect that you will come in on January 7th having read that reading. Um, so um, come to class having done the readings, uh, and we will set up group discussion guidelines together so that there are guidelines we all feel we can follow. You may wish to take notes during class discussion, or you may not. It's okay, whatever you want to do. Uh, on Wednesdays, we're going to have invited guest speakers, including the authors of our textbooks and local activists addressing homelessness. Uh, I can't emphasize how important this is to me enough. Uh, these guests are generously taking time away from their very important work on homelessness and from their other responsibilities as academics and as activists to teach us. Uh, we must show them so much respect and so much appreciation for taking their time for us. They're not getting paid to do this. There's nothing in it for them except to share what they know with you. Um, so I ask you to please sign in to all Wednesday meetings on time. 
Uh, it's appropriate to dress casually. I don't really care if you wear jeans and t-shirts or sweatshirts or whatever feels right, but please wear daytime clothes and not pajamas or loungewear. Um, please keep your camera turned on the whole time. It, it feels really strange if you're a lecturer or a speaker to address a group of, of avatars. Uh, it feels really uncomfortable and I don't want to sound ageist, but most of our guests are not technology natives. They're not people who grew up using things like Zoom and Teams. So it's especially disconcerting for them to be on a group chat and not know who's there. Uh, so please keep your cameras on the whole time uh, and please keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking. Uh, please attend all Wednesday meetings having read the guest speaker's bio as well as any assigned readings that the guest may have contributed. It's my job to make sure these readings are reasonable for you and aren't going to be too stressful and onerous. Uh, and if a guest speaker suggests that you read 40 pages, I'll tell them that's not possible. Um, but for example, our first guest speaker, Deborah Paget, has asked you to read what amounts to about 15 pages. So uh, I ask that you please read that. Um, it may be less, it may be more like 12 pages. But I ask that you please read that along with her biography before we talk to her uh, so that you have some feel for her experience, her background, her opinions, and can use the time to ask her thoughtful questions. Um, these materials will be on Moodle at least one week before the relevant meeting. So for example, all the materials for Deborah Paget's uh, guest address are already on Moodle for you. Um, and we'll look at the Moodle page together in a minute. On the Tuesday and Thursday sessions when you're not in class with me, uh, I expect you to uh, I expect you to do a short reading or watch a documentary and discuss it in the appropriate discussion forum on Moodle. And we already discussed how to do that. Um, I expect you to do this uh, unless you're engaging in service on that day. If you're engaging on, in service on that day, uh, it's okay with me if you skip the reading and discussion forum. I'll just expect you to post in the forum that you're engaging in service. Um, this is the most important policy I have to emphasize. Uh, it's very important to me that you understand this, so please pay close attention. Uh, during this course, we will be working with persons experiencing homelessness in a variety of contexts. It is vitally important that we treat these people with respect, consideration, and dignity at all times. So I'm not going to read this to you. I'm just going to break it down for you. Um, we are people who have the privilege of living indoors, of having permanent places to stay, of having places to keep warm, to keep safe, to keep our possessions safe, to have enough food to eat, to have you know, access to, to safety and wellness uh, to varying degrees. And the folks we're going to be working with have very different experiences related to all of these concerns. They may not have a place to sleep indoors at all. The place they have to sleep indoors may be frightening or dangerous for them. Uh, they may be experiencing mental illness or psychological uh, crises or drug addiction that makes everything they're experiencing feel terrifying uh, and confusing. Uh, they may not know when or if they'll get to eat. Um, they are experiencing extreme hardships uh, and they are marginalized in every way imaginable. So they may have negative interactions with police on a day-to-day -day basis. They may be harassed by housed people on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they may be hassled by business owners or proprietors, told to leave, told to get out, told to get off the sidewalk. Uh, these are folks who have so many negative experiences with the rest of society that the least we can do is to treat them with the utmost courtesy, respect, and dignity that we can muster. Uh, so this includes always using appropriate language and manners, uh, as well as dem demonstrating respect for their privacy and boundaries. 
So this could look like when you're approaching a person who's on the street and it's unclear if they live there, just like you wouldn't open someone's dorm room and walk in unannounced, you want to try to get someone's attention and say hello. I'd like to talk to you. Is that okay? Before walking up. What you would not want to do is, for example, walk up to someone sleeping on the sidewalk and shake them awake. Uh, this would be completely unacceptable and not something you would ever do to a housed person. Um, another very important way we're going to respect the boundaries of the persons we're working with is that we're never going to photograph them. Um, there's a lot of stigma, a lot of societal shame around experiencing homelessness. And people who are experiencing homelessness have almost no opportunity to protect their privacy. So what we're not going to do is take any pictures of any persons who are experiencing homelessness unless you're specifically asked to do so by the agency you're serving at for a particular reason. Uh, I'll give you an example. I once worked with an agency and one of our goals was to help create agency IDs. Uh, for the people we were serving. So the goal was to create identification cards that these folks could carry with them that would identify them as clients of this agency. In that case, it was absolutely necessary to take photos of the clients. Um, what we did with those photos was we made the ID cards, we gave one copy to the client, we gave one copy to the agency, and we deleted all the files. Uh, and that's how we're going to handle photographing people here, too. Um, I know a lot of you may want to talk to your friends about what you did this winter, what you did this January, uh, and you may want to show pictures. It is fine to take pictures of yourself at a service site or to show pictures of yourself working with volunteers or working with trainers or working with agency staff. But we're, we're not going to ever reduce a homeless person to a prop. Um, even if you feel you've made friends with them, it's not appropriate to take their picture and share it. Um, this is vitally important to understand. Um, it's also important not to ask intrusive questions out of curiosity. So when we're talking to uh, folks who are experiencing homelessness, we may be tasked by the agency we're serving, such as One Roof, to ask them particular questions, some of which may feel a little uncomfortable. But what we shouldn't do is ask any questions about how they became homeless or about why they don't live somewhere or about why you know they engage in any of the behaviors they engage in just because we're curious. Uh, this is unkind. Um, and it's effectively using persons experiencing homelessness as a form of entertainment. And we won't be doing that. Um, people may choose to share elements of their lives and experiences with us, but that should be their decision. Uh, asking questions about a, personal, a person's experience with homelessness may trigger traumatic responses and do real harm. So living on the street without housing and being subject to how society treats homeless people can be very traumatic. Uh, also, people may be experiencing homelessness because they experienced a crisis. Um, and so we want to be aware that if we ask curious questions for fun, we could actually hurt someone. Um, when we engage in individual or small group service, we should always remember that we're guests of an agency that is already working with persons experiencing homelessness. That means these agencies have put in the work to understand the needs of their clients, to build trust and rapport with their clients, and a bad volunteer can undo a lot of that good. So we're going to be the best volunteer. We are going to abide by agency policy and rules at all times. Uh, we're also going to demonstrate respect for ourselves and for the people we're serving by always being on time, working at our assigned tasks the entire time, and treating clients and staffs with, with politeness and with kindness and generosity and civility. Um, all students are accountable for their behavior at service sites, whether in person or virtual. 
And if you do anything inappropriate after we've talked about this, it could result in a failing grade. If you do something unintentionally inappropriate, we'll talk about it, we'll unpack it. This is not meant as a threat, but it's absolutely meant as an incentive to be careful. Um, during the point in time count, we will be working on a highly structured project coordinated by one Ruth Birmingham. And it's important to follow instructions carefully and conduct research correctly. Uh, it's important to realize that we're actually going to be intruding in homeless spaces. There's really no other word for what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going to the places where homeless people live. And we're going to be asking them questions, asking them to help us. Um, this is an intrusion. And it's a, it's a necessary intrusion that we're doing for good reasons but it's still an intrusion. Uh, and we'll be interviewing people in the spaces where they live, eat, and sleep. So it's essential that we be careful and respectful, uh, both of, of ourselves and of the, per the persons we're working with. So uh, I expect you to, while we're doing the point in time count, to dress appropriately for weather conditions, um, to stay in groups, uh, and to talk to me or a One Roof staff member if you encounter any problems or if you feel unsafe or if you feel that someone else is unsafe. Um, so you may meet a person who you think uh, is in very acute crisis and you need to let somebody know that. Uh, instead of just if a person seems very distressed or very uh, injured or very ill, you should, let a, you should let a responsible party know. Um, you should also be careful for yourself. Um, these are just like any other situation where you're interacting with people you don't know. Uh, it's important to mind your surroundings and be aware of your own well-being. Um, so failure to treat others respectfully or to behave with judgment could result in a failing grade and removal from the project. Um, excused absences. Uh, we will meet very few times during this course. Uh, most of us will meet in person only about four or five times. Uh, therefore, I expect each student to attend each scheduled class meeting. Uh, the assignments in this course are carefully sequenced to build on one another, and completing assignments late reduces their effectiveness. So here I specifically mean the reflective writings. So I need the reflective writings to be turned in in sequence. So the first one before the second one before the third one. Uh, I can give you a few extra days here and there, uh, but the next one will be due uh, a week after. So you only really have a couple of days window to get it caught up. Um, I'll grant excused absences and accept late work for several specific reasons. Uh, such as participation in college athletics, religious obligations, uh, the death of a family member or friend, I hope that never happens, a severe illness requiring an emergency room visit or hospitalization, again, I hope this won't happen, uh, and other similarly serious situations. Um, by other serious, uh, si other similarly serious situations, if you have a situation where you think that a reasonable person wouldn't expect you to be in class, you should tell me. I'm a pretty reasonable person. Uh, I'm actually super friendly. Um, I have to be really serious right now because I'm communicating a lot of important information to you all at once. Uh, but I'm actually a super friendly person and I will totally consider your request. I may have to say no. Um, but if you have a situation where you think no reasonable professor would expect me to be in class right now, let me know. Um, if you miss a class meeting or a due date or an assigned meeting outside of class, uh, you have five calendar days, including holidays and weekends, to contact me, provide appropriate documentation for your absence, and schedule makeup work. That doesn't mean you have five days to complete the makeup work. You have five days to make a plan with me. Um, here's the major caveat, friends, and I can't emphasize this enough. If you have COVID-19 or if you have been told to quarantine because of an exposure, 
please do not attend in-person class meetings or service site visits no matter what. You will be excused and allowed to make up all missed work regardless of how long it takes if you have COVID-19. Please do not come to class. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, accessibility. I want to make this, go this class as accessible as everyone for everyone as possible. I want everyone who wants to participate to be able to participate. So if there's something I can do to help you access the course, please let me know. If you need help getting academic accommodations, I will help you. Um, Angie Smith is the person to talk to and I can help you get in touch with her. Uh, finally, changes to syllabus. Uh, I may need to make some tweaks to the syllabus as we go on together. Uh, I don't expect to make any major changes, um, but my two promises are that I'll discuss any changes that may take place before they go into effect, and I will not change the syllabus in any way which would make the course harder for students. It says after the withdrawal period, but I just won't do that. I won't make the class any harder for you than it already is. Uh, so, for example, I may cut a reading, but I won't add one. I may replace uh, one speaker with another speaker. I may uh, do something like that, but I won't do anything like add exams. Um, so, you now know what I expect of you. Um, I also expect you to be communicative, to get in touch, to let me know if you have questions, challenges, problems. Um, we're only going to be in person together four or five times. So it's pretty important that we uh, get to know each other as quickly as possible. And a great way to do that is to schedule a virtual meeting with me or to schedule a phone meeting with me or to drop by after class and say hello. Um, another good way to do that is to fill out the pre-course survey that was attached to my last email. Uh, so I know when you'd like to attend class and a little bit more about you. Helps me get to know you a little better. Um, a couple of things about me, um, since we're, we're finished with the important part. Um, my name is Stephanie, and I like to be called Stephanie. Uh, I don't like to be called Dr. Hansard. Um, I can compromise if you're uncomfortable calling me Stephanie with Professor Hansard. Professor Hansard is a fine alternative. Um, I have a doctoral degree. But because I'm a Quaker, I prefer to be called uh, by a job title rather than an honorific title. It's just a preference. Uh, in return, I'll call you anything you would like to be called within reason. Um, other things about me that you should know, um, I'm really enthusiastic <coughs> about teaching this course, and I can't wait to get to know you, Jane. Thank you very much.